Arpeggios are chords played one note at a time. Now, if you think about it, there's thousands of chords, so there are probably thousands of arpeggios, so it's a big library of stuff, right? Arpeggios can be used in a number of other ways. They are very cool technically because they're not scales, they're not chords, they're sort of in between, so they develop a very unique technical capability. My personal favorite way to use arpeggios is as a tool of exploration. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris. Today you will learn how to use arpeggios to explore the sonic universe. All right, that sounds a little hokey, but I'm going to explain what I'm talking about. I'm going to dig in there and really show you what, I'm, what I mean. And then we're going to zoom in and I'm going to show, actually show you how to do it. Tabs for this video, as well as every video on this channel, are available on Patreon and that's always linked in the description. So if you see anything on this channel that you want to grab the tabs for, head on over to Patreon and pick them up there. Also know that Patreon is the entry point for my teaching platform called The Studio. And it's in the studio where I'm interacting with guitar players all the time. I post a weekly assignment. You can register for live courses that I'm teaching. So if you like this channel, you like what I'm doing, you want to get a little deeper, head on over to Patreon and see what you think. Okay, exploring, what, exploring the sonic universe, what am I actually talking about? Arpeggios, again, are chords played one note at a time. So they're very uniquely packed with absolutely beautiful harmonic information. Unlike a scale, which sort of like passes by that information, arpeggios contain it and that's all they're built of. So when you play an arpeggio, you're hearing the harmonic makeup, the DNA of the chord you're playing. Regardless of whether you know the name of the chord, you're hearing the sound. It's all of that harmonic relationship boiled down to three notes, four notes, right? That's why they're so powerful in this way. So the thing I'm going to show you is how to take an arpeggio, play through an arpeggio, and then just by using one note, moving one note up or down, change the harmonic structure of what you're hearing and listen to it. Listen to that new sound. What is that? Is that good? Is it a good sound? Is it a bad sound? Are you hearing something different? And if you're hearing something different, how do you move those notes around to find that thing you're hearing? And that cycle is changing your musical preference into your musical capability, right? I really like the way this sounds. Now I can play that thing. I can create those sounds. Okay, let's zoom in and I'll show you how this works. Okay, using arpeggios uh, as a tool to explore the sonic galaxy, whatever you want to call it. What am I actually talking about here? Um, as I said at the top, arpeggios are a lot of things, right? They're chords played in one note at a time. There are thousands of chords, so there's probably thousands of arpeggios. They're a technique, right? There's something unique um, in the world of technique. And they're also really cool for just like having some fun, right? So I'm going to just, we're just going to start out with this A arpeggio, top two strings. This is root three, five. We don't even really need to know that, but it's sort of helpful because we, we, it just helps ground us, right? Here it is, root three, five. It's just a, a simple arpeggio. It's on the top two strings. One note here, two notes here. That piece that I played at the top, that classical sounding etude, I'm gonna show you how I wrote it. And I wrote it just using this idea of taking some arpeggios and just moving some things around. So here's my A chord. I'm just going to take a turn with each one of these three notes and I'm going to take a turn moving it down in the arpeggio, moving that note down a fret and playing the arpeggio and then moving it down again and just seeing the result I get. So I'm going to start with this highest note here. I'm going to play the arpeggio, then I'm going to move that note down, then I'm going to move it down again. Then I'm going to go back to the beginning. All right, just a simple exercise. kind of cool. Maybe that's all it ever is, is an exercise. Because as an exercise, it looks like it might, you know, sort of get your technique down. Right? It's kind of a cool exercise. You could sit in front of the TV and do this all day. But if I like the way this sounds, I can grab my pencil, right, and, and catalog what it is. What are these notes? What's going on? Root three, five. 
If I move the five down, that's flat five, right? A flat five. Theoretically, this is actually like A sharp 11. The four, the sharp four and the flat five are the same thing. But again, we don't need to know too much of that. But if I do want to catalog this and figure it out for later, and I want to discuss it with somebody or share it with the band, I'm going to need that information. But right now, maybe I don't need that. Right? It's just something fun to play based on an arpeggio, right? I'm getting good technical workout. I'm, I'm hearing something cool. I'm just fishing around. I'm exploring. I'm going to do the same thing, but now I'm going to move the third, right? This note here, the second note in the arpeggio. I'm going to move that down. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just listening for what's going to happen. I'm not thinking about music theory at all. Move it down again. Move it back up. That's pretty cool. Maybe I like that. This is the third. I'm going major to minor to suspended. But again, I don't have to worry about that if I'm just like, you know, messing around, listening to things. Now we're going to do the same thing with the root. We're just going to move that note down. I'm hearing something though. Check this out. I want to. I, this note here, this arpeggio, I want to hear, I want to hear this go down again. But that doesn't sound right. Give me a second here. That's it. So now check out the results. It's going to want me to keep going down, right? I'm just listening to things and looking around and like changing my fingering and trying to find something cool. All right, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to take our triad here. I'm going to add the seventh degree, which is a half step below the, the root. Now I'm going to make this a four note arpeggio. Put a pull off at the top. Watch this. I'm going to take each one of these notes and I'm going to move them down individually. That's kind of cool, right? I'm using each one of these notes, sort of like moving them down in succession. That just happens to be major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, and minor seven flat five, all from the same root. I'm just changing chord types there, but it's kind of cool. It's a cool exercise. Maybe I'm hearing some cool stuff. Maybe I want to catalog this chord for later. Cause that's not, that sounds really cool. A minor seven flat five chord. Pretty cool. Here's just an idea that I stumbled across earlier today that I thought was cool. It's um the first shape is this. Just moving that low note up. It's kind of a James Bond groove, right? Um, it's just something I'm doing. It's just a pattern I'm playing and I'm listening to those notes. These notes are staying the same. This one's just going up. Right? It's not the James Bond kind of sound. If I like this and I'm excited about it, I'm going to tear it apart. I happen to know for a fact this is C sharp minor. 
this is A major, and this is A sharp diminished. Right, so if I like this, I wanna catalog it. I'm gonna get this pencil out, I'm gonna write it down so I can catalog it and save it, right? So you use these arpeggios to just like explore some stuff. You can do this on any string set, you can do it with any shape. Just explore the space, right? Look around, listen to what you're playing. When you find something interesting, stop, and then bring your music theory in or start asking questions. Use that pencil and that piece of paper to write down what you found and figure out what it is. Then you're turning your musical preference into your musical capability. Okay, exploring the sonic universe using arpeggios, it's actually a thing, right? And the most important part here is that we're just opening our ears, right? If we find something we like, we're bringing in a little music theory to try to figure out what it is so that we can convey it or write it down so we can remember it. Right? Not, it's not just shapes on the fretboard, but if we find something we love, we can catalog it using music theory. The big win here is not only are you building technique, playing these arpeggios, because you can see how you can build some really cool technical capability, but you're also expanding your ear and you're, you're being curious and you're moving notes around and going, ooh, I like that, or that doesn't work at all. I need to move it down one more, or maybe I should move these notes up. So this exercise, this capability of just taking an arpeggio and just mucking with it, right, and having some fun with it, allows you to stand on the precipice of turning your musical preference into your musical capability, right? Turning the thing you like to hear into the thing you can play. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you found it interesting, and I'll see you next time.